radio is Draconis went to his room to grab the stuff and he should be here shortly. Well, no! She can still pee. Okay. Pee something. All right. Basically, you have a few ways of doing fursuits. There's more ways. But. Be more ambiguous. It's just what does ambiguous mean? Look it up. Let me get my, me get my dictionary on Google. Which is kind of weird. Okay. Um, there is a few ways I'm going to start. I have to start with the bra. Have you done know my thesis statements? I do. But I went to college. I, I, went, to, I, went, I, hate, I hate them too. I had to write so many papers. Like, your thesis is not strong. Teach them something. I'm trying to do it. Okay. The so so primary ways that I know that many people know about so far is foam heads, and then you have, which is this, which is this lovely shaped head here, carved foam. Mm -hmm. We got carved foam heads, expanding foam heads, which is something that people. It's in the dealer's den. That guy has expanding foam heads at his stall. Yeah, all right. Dealer's den. See, she knows something. I think no, I know. I'm just saying, like, no, I'm just saying, listen to the dog. Um, and the cat that is not wearing its fur suit right now because I had no time. Have you done t-shirt? Okay. Teach him something. Okay. Fur suits are the best. Basically, in my, I, I tend to work with resin the most because it does give you the ability to carve, well, well the initial the clay yeah. mold, build. Whatever. Oh, um, build. You are able to build the shape of the actual creature more to its realistic counterpart than, say, foam, which you have to actually go in and cut and build up. It's realistic-ish. No, wait. Right? I, mean, I was gonna get there. Let me get there. Don't <laughs> smash me. I'm not smashing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not smashing. Oh, it's not appropriate. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> you 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 missed half the conversation. Resin, resin is what you call the ideal shape keeping form, given the fact that it's something it's solid. It's small, is... close fitting fursuit heads. She made it a lot more detailed than I just said it. <laughs> Foam's good for big. Resin's good for little. I've tried to make a little foam head. It don't work well. It doesn't, especially with the small details. Like I don't know, trying to um, figure out how teeth is gonna go in there and stuff like that. It's complicated and there's no point to it <laughs> but i'm gonna go piece by piece if you're looking for hyper realistic base heads many people go for resin you know it's easier to install glass eyes on a hard surface versus something that's you know that over time and he can just melt and just or I'm lose its shape <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's you are already sticky. <laughs> <laughs> glue glass. When you glue glass, you use epoxy. I know. <laughs> That's what the gun is for. I'm not gonna shoot her. Is there a ball in your hole? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so <laughs> fetch. <laughs> no. Time out, Missy. Time out. You're not gonna get your dog on bacon bits. <laughs> the, best, the best part is, is it's loaded as she looks down the barrel. <laughs> but I can also yeah, cause a lot of pain with one gun. swipe of my feet. Oh, Quit telling me stuff. Okay. All right. I wish we had more examples, but he didn't think about this. Well, he, he might be bringing them. Okay, good. Because I sure as hell don't have any. He call, it's called rushing me. Not you, but him. Um, <laughs> you've been doing that already. Tech and all technical. I just came from another place to That's do all this stuff, and yeah, now yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna be doing this. All right. And I'm getting ready to go over next. You okay? I'm gonna probably well, need to go on Tuni now because you already said it. Um, Tuni, to me, to a lot of people actually, it's harder than a realistic head. Let me say this because on a realistic head, you already got the basic shape down from the beginning, most people. Because I don't know. See, it's, su it's such a huge topic, such a broad topic. A lot topic. of people buy the resin bases too now. Yeah. They're making their own. That's, that's sad. I was watching, sometimes it's, no, that confuses me because once you see like the shape and you come up to them and say, oh, your head is from such and such. And no, I just got the base from there. I'm like, no reason it looks all messed up from the outside. <laughs> okay. Don't teach them fast. No, I'm, no, I'm trying to oh, say something. The dog's at the door. Rah! Okay. <laughs> How about you say something I add on to you, since apparently the guy who'll be adding on isn't here. I do Toonie. I don't do resin. Okay, I'll talk about resin. She talks about Toonie. Foam. Foam. You just Foam. said Toonie. 
I know, but I was specifying the material I used. Oh! Okay, I thought you just said foam. I'm like, what else? <laughs> You're resin, I'm foam. Okay, resin. I tend to start with clay, particularly things that, is that my phone? It doesn't matter, teach them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman, I'm so sorry. You're catching like moments. I'm usually really good at this right now, but it's like I'm lost when I don't have the person here that's supposed to be whatever. Yes, we're gonna do this. I typically start with a sulfur with a sulfur free clay or sulfur sulfur free clay, uh, plasticine in particular. Um, and I look at various references that I print from. I try to get as many as possible because you want to make sure that it is, you know, um, consistent. You know, otherwise people are gonna say, "Oh, that's a dog. It's a wolf." Yeah. There's a difference, obviously. And I'm saying obviously very sarcastically to those that aren't really used to seeing a wolf in person versus looking at Google. As far as they're concerned, they're dogs too. Um, you want to get side. <laughs> you want to get side profiles, you want to get the front, and you want to try your best and get an above shot. It's very hard for you to do unless you have a 3D model, which is what I do. When I don't have information, I complete it myself, or basically look at my dog for a reference because I, you know, I do take. But we'll start I was about to say why. <laughs> <laughs> Based on information that you can actually look up on said creatures, you can adjust it accordingly. <laughs> and what I do is that I don't put the details on the actual um, on the actual model. I call it something different. You probably call it something else. But okay. that word she said. Um, and I form it to the basic the basic form of the animal's face, in this case a wolf or basically a dog German or whatever, you know, it really doesn't matter. You basically get the basic form that can be adjusted to a few species, that's what you want to do, versus just having one base for one species and another base for another species, rather than to have this in-between where you can add, uh, build up foam or whatever to give it more of the shape that you're looking for so you don't waste so much material. <coughs> and so much time trying to make separate bases. There's a lot of freaking species out there. It's like, I'm gonna make one for a German Shepherd, I'm gonna make one for a Greyhound, I'm gonna make one for, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you are big money banking and now I don't know, power to you. But it's a lot more of a hassle to keep up with all those molder molds, all of those you know, silicone pieces, rubber, all of that stuff. And that's what I try to do. Like if I wanted to make a otter, um, in the future from a, a ferret base that I have. That is quite possible because it look, looks similar. You just add on the cheeks and make it a little bit broader, like a bigger bigger face. So that's what I do for resin. Um, and for eyes, I typically buy glass blanks or uh, acrylic cabochons. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, um, and then also there's an option of actually if you can contact, like you have Van Dyke or Tohi Khan. Tohi um, Khan's the best. Freaking, oh, fist bump, oh. They're always my taxidermy people. I know. I I, anyway. Yeah, I call for custom, custom blanks. Like basically the blank versions of their plastic eyes. People don't know Glass. that they do that. Glass, close to God, uh, that acrylic, I keep thinking it's Black glass. <laughs> It's weird because of what I know we can see him. I got some of their bobcat eyes in my room right now. I didn't even want to be here. Um, and I would, for like custom eyes, instead of me having to pay that extra fee to have them custom made by them, I paint them myself using um, the paints I get from them for the eyes. You can do them yourself with really small detail brushes. And that's what I do for. Um, like I call, I have demon wolves that I'm working on right now. People haven't seen them. I'm glad that they haven't until I get some stuff down. <laughs> and they, they're a lot more, they're good for forward facing eyes. They give this <coughs> realistic, you have the, you know, the gloss to them, but it doesn't look like it's like it's painted on a flat back. It's kind of like con yeah, concave, convex eyes. And they look, they, huh? <laughs> I didn't. How you do this? You just, just put this in. Put stuff in. Yeah, you just. No, you have to bring it first. You pull it back. This might be used for you later. I get it. The further you pull it back, the farther it'll go. Okay. Well, you need to teach them still. I am. All the dudes, you're doing this. Okay. I do 
Um, you can sometimes use um, resin. It's however, like depending on how large you do it, to actually install toony eyes to make that semi cartoony realistic look. That's what I do. Well, I only did it twice, and that's something I'm trying to get down. Um, for tear duct vision, which is what people say they can't stand, if you do it right, you can have a like a good range of vision. Yeah. But it also depends on your species. Because if someone's getting like a, a bull terrier, you know what I'm saying, it, that's gonna be, you have to be creative with that, especially with the field of vision. You got this big blind spot right here, especially with tear duct vision. So I would try my best to find a way around that without sacrificing the actual species look. Because if you make it too small, it can look like a, you know, a different dog versus what you wanted or different uh, you know, canine, feline, whatever. It's like, that looks like a cougar. No, I was trying to do links. I got called kangaroo once. People do that. You think in the fandom they would actually know things about animals. At least, some, I know you can over-exaggerate features, whatever, but you can at least kind of figure out by like, if not the face, the tail, if not the tail, the face. For the wings. Well, there's yeah. only four species in the fandom. Cat, dog, dragon, lover. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. no, no, Fox. there's foxes. Fox. Which is a dog that works. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'll... technically, <laughs> canine. Okay, fine. No, foxes are bullpine. Bullpine? Oh, wait, aren't they the only ones in that category? No, we got gray foxes, the arctic foxes. There are other foxes. Well, I know there's other foxes. I'm saying, is there anything besides foxes in the bullpine? No. no, it's foxes. Okay, there you go. It's just all of the foxes. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. I'm like, oh, I, I know there was other you know, foxes. I said Teach boxes. them. Bro, you just say something. You see, I don't, <laughs> I don't really go on tangents exactly how to do so because they'll be over information overload, but it wouldn't be. Okay. Furring. Bags are scared for taking stuff and then duct tape them. Trash bag your head, duct tape it. <laughs> I'm the bad thing, I'm going home and just going. <laughs> I can see what I'm doing better, especially when I don't find my um, permanent markers. Which happens to happen a lot, even with an assistant. They're like, I'm like, where'd you put my workers? I'm like, oh my god, oh. here's a pencil. All right. <laughs> but um, patterning is kind of important. Um, it's really hard to actually show that process. But what you would do patterning for is to actually know the placement of your fur. Fur direction is important. I'm pretty sure you. <coughs> yeah. My my uh, first my fur uh, runs head looks like crap because I didn't pay attention to the direction of the fur. I didn't even pattern it at all, so. Yeah, fur, yeah, fur runs away from the nose. What happens. Yes, away from the nose. That's your starting point. Yeah. Away, up the ear, and down the back. Look at real animals if you want to know what's going down. Exactly, you want to know what's going down. I'm the only timber. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Also, going back to the uh, drink. <laughs> not oh. only do you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <Not> with me. <laughs> okay, if you, here's, a, here's, a, here's a little tip though for those that probably are already doing fursuit making. Yeah. If you're wanting to, it's what I do to try to remember where placements is, especially if I have more than one color on the face. You know, because some people ask for the most weirdest thing, like I want rainbows on this cheek and then blue on that cheek you know stuff like that people do that and i said no but <laughs> what you do is with foam heads in particular I'm, I'm going into that because it also works with resin heads especially because i foam my resin heads a lot so it still works for i sharpie on the pad that's what i was gonna say uh, <laughs> when you take something off i tend to like you draw like where like the uh, contour of the actual pattern that's left on there. And the more you, like, you do that, you basically, I number mine. You mark up the pattern and try to put your seams where the color changes are. Some people don't do that. And then also put arrows on it marking the fur direction so you that's don't so, do. Mm -hmm. Arrows make your life easy. If like, not. If, otherwise you'd be like, what the hell is the seam going to? Yeah, also, that, before you cut it apart where this, the different colors join, draw a couple of lines. So whenever you actually try to match up the two pieces of fur, you can match them up more easily. And don't mark on the back of your fur with Sharpie. That's bad. It can bleed through. Especially you if your ass awesome. have white fur. I've seen too many people do it. I'm <laughs> looking at their fur, I'm just like, oh. They have Taylor's chalk, Taylor's pencils, all of these wash it out. Yeah. And you can mark all over that sucker and it will go away magically. I just look like the, the freaking uh, the sidekick with a weapon, just like I'm posing for sidekick. <laughs> I, like, I like that you're the sidekick and I'm the real one. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. See, have we gone to use hey. it? I'm saying, 
I was gonna. They came out wrong. Teach them. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, how many movies? How many movies has the has the rogue with the weapon and then the big furry thing following them around? That would be that would be incredible. I'm gonna be. Inc I'm not gonna think about the title yet. Oh, you should talk about noses for resin heads. Okay. Like from Van Dyke's and stuff. Okay, typically, well, typically I don't go to them, I make my own. Oh, wow. Because I take for resin heads, I typically do. You can talk to them about that, even I though don't, you're. I don't just, I don't okay, the basically, they do have nose forms. They do have nose forms for um, heads. But it's kind of, okay. It, but for me, what I tend to do is I form the nose well, to the actual. Eating soup? Okay, okay. I got confused for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what I typically do is I actually carefully make the form the nose as the most detailed as possible um, because at the end I leave the nose sticking out. Like I cut into the clay, um, like shallow, like a shallow cut into it, like around a, a, not even a quarter of an inch, but probably like it's like one sixteenth of an inch, like not not that not, not that big of a. You know, no, cut down into it. it. Word you it. have that word. I was looking for the word. I couldn't think about. It. I had to keep going. Man, you want to go teach them? It so you can roll, run that raw edge of fur into it and hide it with glue. Because raw edges, they they tend to get They're on evil. me a lot. It's like I will look at the fur and say, some it just doesn't look as clean. Doesn't look as professional. So when you tuck it in, it gives that uniform, like that clean look. Like you never really did stab it with a dog on a exacto knife. <laughs> Very carefully and making jagged spots. I tend to do it. Okay, um, and then I go over that nose with a chip-proof um, sealant. Um, uh, what kind of sealant? I'm trying to get the name. Is it lacquer? I'm trying to get the name, so I don't know it specifically. But lack, some, <laughs> yeah, some type of lacquer. Primer, it's probably an epoxy. Uh, I'll figure that out. Let's just say it's clear, chip-proof lacquer, or in a uh, in a. Okay, no. you put a brush on it and you paint it on and then it looks nice at the end where it stays glossy and it looks wet. Or, it was another thing I could do was that I'll take silicone noses or basically urethane rubber, urethane rubber is my, is my stick because you can actually find things to stick to it versus silicone. silicone where you have to put a piece of fabric on there and if you miss that opportunity while you were freaking molding it, you're SOL unless you got some um, silicone adhesive, even then, there's a possibility that someone, you can run into a wall and go, hey, boop, and it flies right off. Um, I would drill a hole um, that is slightly smaller than the actual um, nose piece, um, and I would stick it in that section and then glue it down. Um, usually, I put a reinforced uh, piece of metal down into it. It's really hard to explain that without it being here because, you know. Epoxy sculpt one that will help also. To blend that edge. Okay, edge blending, yeah. That, that's You don't technical. want a bump or a ridge or anything going down. Yeah, it doesn't oh, look oh. natural. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shoot so you with this. We had it fun earlier. She's Teach them. <laughs> don't <laughs> oh, I'm gonna just put that down. I'm just gonna put a picture on your Facebook and say, shoot her, please, don't shoot me. Uh, <laughs> Give me that weapon. I need ah, that for you. Ah, I need them for you. Teach them. I'm gonna teach them, but I need that for you. Give it back. Okay. Um, you can beat them with my fan. I have to walk over there. Okay, <laughs> bro. Let me do. Let me. I'm gonna do it. You can stop telling me to teach them. I can teach them. Can you do that for me? <laughs> we do. No. We really need to get a picture of just her pointing and teach them. It's yeah, crazy. that's what I was getting ready to think about somebody doing. I can just totally Photoshop that. But let me go. <laughs> All right. Edge blending gives. A, if you look at an actual animal, if you want to go for hyper realistic, you want that to look like it naturally comes from the um, bridge of the nose. <laughs> you know, it's good practice. It's good practice. All right. You know what I'm saying. Some people just don't care and just leave it that, like that. Or they just leave it to the fur to be the leveler. But I don't recommend that, especially at times where you know your fur flattens out and it's like you can just pull that nose right off. It's just that just for aesthetic purposes, that is what is recommended. Okay. I'm we're still waiting on this dude. Okay. 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 Um, teeth. This is my favorite subject. <laughs> 
I sculpt all of my teeth by uh, myself the same way I do with my resin heads. I basically sculpt them out of uh, a hard clay this time because they have different varying um, thicknesses and uh, hardness. Uh, you have soft, medium, but I use the hard, the hardest one for the teeth because when you're like molding and demolding or trying to put silicone over your uh, um, your final piece that you uh, want to have, um, I guess you have it last longer. Basically, have it molded and cast it and whatever. Um, you don't want to accidentally bump it or the teeth will start sagging in because of the pressure, like the um, heaviness of the silicone and they'll start tilting your teeth in. Trust me, I learned my lesson when I came back. I'm like, wow. Once it's in that silicone, it stays there. There's, if you try to melt it or try to adjust it in any way, you're going to permanently mess up that and waste some perfectly good material. I've done that twice when I was starting out back in 2008. And mm -hmm. <laughs> of course you were there. <laughs> and it was, it was deplorable. I didn't know any better, but again, that's part of first suit making, experimentation. I love but all things. <laughs> and also experimentation with education. You don't want to go and get something that can possibly harm your freaking life. Because I've had someone that decided to mix two separate companies of resin and it caused some fumes. Wear a respirator, eye protection, hand protection, do your shit, Gloss. don't die and get cancer. We want you to last. We want your first suit career to last. Otherwise, it'll be your last first suit. And do it out in the open, not in a dorm room. <laughs> KJ, do it in the open. Excuse me, why I knew about my dog on stuff. In fact, I didn't do anything that I'm gonna fall. You okay? You have to make you. you I started in a dorm. Oh, okay. I'm just like I. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't say anything. All right. <laughs> what? With, I'm just talking about that now. This is another subject for another time. Oh, uh, with you teeth. I mean, after you go through, you know, I told you why you use harder plays or whatever, just to make sure they're knock over. But I. I thought this was a general level fursuiting class. <laughs> first of all, he didn't tell me that. He just said it's a uh, how to uh, fursuit tips from block. Whatever. Go. Okay. <laughs> It's not really a thing is if you're gonna do resin based heads, it's pretty much cut and dry. You make it out of clay, you basically you set um, either it, the people, it depends, Umu, um, Rebound is what I use. Silicone. Uh, silicone, I was gonna different types of silicone. Okay, different types of silicones out there. And you use that to basically, I, I basically say immortalize your very easily destructible piece. You use the main mold to actually make many of whatever it is you're making. It makes your job easier instead of you having to constantly do the same thing over and over again for a different species. Again, I just basically have it to where it's an in-between thing that can be used for um, certain creatures. If not, you, you can try to cut into it a bit more, you know, make it smaller to fit into like the jaws because resin is not forgiving for this. It's not like foam where you can cut into it more and make the cavity larger to set teeth in. You have to actually get it down, measure how wide it is before you actually start making it out of clay. I learned my lesson the hard way and I have a useless jaw set that I have to make a new resin base to make it useful because I don't want to make that go to waste. Um, so as a beginner, measurement, measuring is important. You don't want to go and just wing it. Oh, well, that looks about mm, this high, this wide. Foam is a lot more forgiving than resin. You can get away with murder. I don't condone this type of behavior. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we don't have two or more pros. Mm -hmm. Say who? Use the elevator shaft. <laughs> I was about to say, I was thinking one. murder when you said murder. <laughs> Wait, why? Is anywhere when y'all came He's down? probably hiding. <laughs> I haven't seen him up here on the cell. I just thought that someone brought something in here like they were getting ready to, unless you had something in this room after this. Yes. yes. How, wait, what time is it? Mm. Ten to I, it's something time. <laughs> time. Time for you to get a wash. <laughs> when is this panel over? Nine? Yeah. Yep. We need to talk about phone. Go talk about phone now. Go. Do it. I, I'll add on to something. Oh. Hey, hey, what I you should say is teach it. One inch foam and half inch foam. I use it. I mean, it's stupid to use a bunch of one inch foam to make something big. Yeah, it takes way too much time. Yeah, you take like two pieces of two inch foam and sandwich them together to carve your muzzle shape out of it. That way you don't have to play Lincoln Law. Yes. But that's fun. And it's much, wasteful. It is a big waste of hot glue. And a very big waste of foam, which is a urethane expensive ass product. 
Oh, it's worth it. You forty-four freaking dollars for a cushion. Is hot glue the only thing you can use? I know. Huh? Is hot glue the only thing you can use? You can use spray glues too, but I use hot glue. Yeah, spray glues. The thing is, you can just test them first so they don't eat the foam, because some glues eat foam. Don't use They eat that foam like groceries. <laughs> don't repeat that? No, don't use ever ulcer. It's bad. Okay. No, I don't no, no, because the reason why we use hot glue because it's readily available at a, like a good amount of stores. So you got and Michaels it's cheap. and it's cheap. Yeah. And it doesn't have fumes. Like it'll kill you. Like spray. yeah, like the spray. I tried to use spray glue from the spray glue. Spray glues tend to make a head heavier than foam unless you just dump the glue on the head. If you if you dump hot glue on the head, it's gonna be heavy. But spray glue saturates it and yeah. makes it a lot more dense. From my experience. Exactly. Have you ever used fabric tack? Fabric tack? I have. It, it, I does, have it does emit fumes while it dries. Oh, I'm impatient too with a crusty, cup. But it's actually very hard and keeps the foam together very well. <laughs> Much better than a usually no. low temperature. I like yeah. instant gratification, and gives me that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, instant gratification is the reason why we stuck with hot glue. Hot glue, you, you stick that thing, Shut hold up. it for about 20 seconds, and then you're ready to roll I have, on. I have burn scars from a hey, hot glue. Hey, I'm use, sorry. Use the low temp or multi temp. It holds. I've left my head in a car for a week to see if yeah. it fall apart. It's fine. That whole fear is unfounded. See, she has, she has that bankroll. She's allowed to do that. I can wash my head in that I mean, I don't even give a crap. Z formation snap, elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Ah. Uh, no. I see some. God, wait, you're the one talking. You teach. What should I teach now? You just said. Oh, I make my eyes out of styrene. A lot of people use white plastic bowls. I find those a pain in the ass to cut. Yo, polystyrene at a thin thickness or like, not too thick. The same thing that the armor makers use, people oh. use for vacuum forming. I buy a huge sheet of it for like twelve dollars. Yes, so when I did my Iron Iron Man, um, my Iron my first Iron Man um, cosplay is still being in the works right now. I use uh, polystyrene. For Styrene's it. awesome, and you can easily cut it with scissors. Heat forming is awesome with it. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, I put it over something uh, to give it a curve. Instead of having flat, you know, pancake eyes, you can set yourself on like a glass bowl yeah. and hit it with a hot blow dryer yeah. and get a little curve to it. You don't want to keep it on there too long or because it warp. will warp like and a... And go back. Hot glue will warp it too if you're not careful. Yeah, um, technically for that, I, te I use a, um, like, you know, E6000 or something like oh, that. Oh, that stuff's like the greatest match in the world. I just it's blow it really fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but that's a way of doing it. That's a way of doing it. And then you can use buckram for the pupil. You can get that at a store yeah. or a plastic mesh. Yeah, a plastic vinyl mesh is basically what I use. Um, it's really it takes <laughs> takes on real well with paint, especially. With you have to feel it though. Sealing is important, otherwise you're gonna have this first suitor that has these more than. How do you sell it? I use? I use a spray lacquer. That's how I use in taxidermy. Same thing. That it's, I, it's a rattle can and it's glossy spray lacquer that seals stuff, and I haven't had a problem with it. I, I mean, I don't saturate it because it'll fill in the holes, but I just yeah, kind of. You kind of sweep. From like three feet away, I missed it. Yeah, and it's like I do mine with greater numbers. It's the same way that she does hers. Uh, with, uh, I use um, vinyl mesh because, again, buffer on the me just over time, it just pushes in a bit, or, you know, especially, you know, with heat and then exactly. cooling, heat, cooling, heat, cooling. Okay. It'll do that over time. But you just breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to breathe like that. I'm sorry. Don't. Oh my God. Uh, uh, <laughs> basically, I do my eyes in. Uh, uh, basically, uh, I do them in a bigger number before I actually like do that, so I can actually get everything done really quickly. Because I go based off of look at what statistically, you know, eye colors. I do a lot of eye colors in advance and then I cut them out and they have the eyes ready and I adjust the shapes afterwards. You should probably answer questions. Okay, any questions? <laughs> what do you use for your beat bombs? I use recycled tire mats. How do you cut that? With pin snips and a Dremel. Yep, okay, I can see it. And how do you glue it on? What did I use? I used contact cement, but uh, shoe glue works too. Shoe glue is what I use. But I don't, I don't have them attached to shoes. I have them just glued to the foam and the curl. Yeah, that's lightweight, yeah. Light, lighter weight compared to shoes. I do have shoes in here. I just found that. So they can be First place. Oh, so make them Okay, good. Make them easier to wash. Yeah. I did not have time to. Yeah. Anything else? This is just recycled tire rubber. Though. It holds up really well. Where do you get recycled tire rubber? Like, yeah. They're welcome mats from Walmart. <laughs> 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 I 
to find ones that are flat and aren't covered in design. Like, and put the scratchy side up. Sounds good. Do so you pay for or do you get individual color? Uh, it's all black. It's all black. You got bl It's tires, man. It's tire color. If you're talking about fur, 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 fur. Oh, fur. Do you paint fur or, or I don't. But if you want an airbrush, Harbor Freight has one for twenty bucks, and that thing rocks. And you can, if you kill it, go buy another one. <laughs> they have a year warranty, I think. I love it. Yeah. Wait, so are you talking about fur colors? Yeah, yes. airbrushing. Um, basically, you can, the thing is, air, our most of the time you want to buy like fur of the color that you're looking for, but sometimes they do not have it. But if you want to do the entire, I do have, a, I do have something, and and, and one of the reasons why I came to the town. There is a job.